Hello, my name is Akshay Tangsale and you are watching the recorded video on Introduction to Process Simulations. In this lecture, we are going to cover mass transfer operations. The learning objectives for this lecture is to understand uh, shortcut methods for modeling distillation columns and uh, to use sensitivity block and design specification block to achieve design objectives. The first step uh, to design any mass transfer operation is to be able to choose the correct property method. We've covered this in earlier lecture, but we will quickly recap uh, how to select a property method. Uh, first, we need to look at what components we have and uh, decide if uh, we have any polar components. If there are no polar compounds, uh, then we can use a simple equation of state model like uh, SRK or Peng Robinson or Pierre SRV. Uh, if there are, however, any polar compounds, then uh, we need to check the pressure of the process. If the pressure is above 10 bar, then we can use an advanced equation of state like PSRK and PC soft. However, if the pressure is below 10 bar, then we need to check if there are any supercritical components. If there are no supercritical components, we can use an activity coefficient model like NRTL or UniQuack. However, if there are any supercritical components, then we need to use an activity coefficient model like NRTL, but with Henry's, uh, Henry's law component into it. So let's uh, have a look what mass transfer equipment are and uh, what do they do for us. So mass transfer is an operation where we can separate substances uh, from uh, each other. And the separation uh, can be of single phase uh, mixture into different components or separation can be of more than one components from multi-phase mixture. Usually components are separated one at a time. For example, if you have multi-phase and multi-component systems, and then it's easier to first separate the two phases, like the gas and the liquid phase, for example, and each phase may have multiple components. Then we can uh, separate those components uh, into various um, uh, purities uh, at one at a time in each phase. So for example, if we have vapor and liquid mixture at the start and both are multi-component systems. We separate the vapor stream first or the gas phase and then in each gas phase then we separate the uh, individual components depending upon their boiling points. The separation can be achieved uh, by transferring the components uh, into a second miscible phase uh, which can be an intimate contact. So for example if you have uh, compounds like water and acetone mixed together then we can transfer acetone into another um, liquid solvent like MIBK. Um, but MIBK is not soluble in water, but acetone is soluble in uh, MIBK. So we get a two-phase separation where we have acetone in uh, both water and MIBK phase. And you can uh, slowly recover acetone by uh, contacting these two phases in different proportions. We will learn a great detail of uh, these mass transfer operations in uh, CHE 3165 in the third year. Uh, but just to give you some examples, uh, we have distillation, adsorption, liquid-liquid extraction, membrane separation, absorption, and crystallization and leaching. Some of these examples we will also cover in CHE 2162, which is material energy balances, but only for uh, mass and energy balances. We are not going to cover in great detail for design-like operation. We are only going to cover some simple unit operations in this unit as well as in uh, CHE 2162. Uh, in this unit and in, uh, sub in uh, CHE 2162 as well, we can use a simple operation like separation block. Uh, in Aspen Plus, uh, we have this SEP2 block which can be used as a, as a separator and it accepts one feed stream and two product streams and only two specifications are required to complete this simulation. For example, you may completely specify the feed stream which is normally known and then we can specify the mass fraction or the mole fraction of one of the um, product streams and then it will solve for the, uh, the, the second product stream coming out of the separator. The specification could be like mole fraction or the purity of uh, one of the product streams or it could be mole flow rate or it could be the recovery information. So uh, this information is useful for carrying out mass balances and energy balances. However, it's not so useful for designing that separation process because it doesn't give you any information about Say, if it's a distillation column, it doesn't give you information about the number of stages and so on. 
So we can use it only for simple operations and to do a uh, process flow diagram and mass and energy balance. If however we want to get some more information about our distillation column which gives us uh, some design capability then the starting point for distillation column is uh, DSGW block in Aspen Plus which is a shortcut distillation method. It can accept one feed stream and two product streams, uh, can have more than two product streams as well uh, from the condenser uh, and the reboiler, but usually two product streams are sufficient. That's the minimum requirement. We can uh, get reasonable estimate of the number of stages and the reflux ratio from uh, this DSGW block. It uses what is called as Win Underwood Gilliland method to estimate uh, the minimum number of stages, which is the wind method. It estimates the minimum reflux ratio using the Underwood method and also estimates the required reflux ratio for a specified number of stages or it can estimate the required number of stages for a specified reflux ratio using the Gilliland method. If we are going to soon have a look at an example on uh, using this DSTWU block. The distill uh, one block in Aspen is uh, also a shortcut distillation method. It uses admister method for estimating distillate and bottom purity and flow rate based on the user defined number of stages, reflux ratios and distillate to feed ratio. There are other blocks also available which are more rigorous in nature uh, and we are not going to cover that in great detail in this unit. However, uh, you are free to explore those uh, at your own time. Let's look at a work problem on uh, using the DSTWU block. Uh, in this problem, we are going to try and separate benzene and toluene. Uh, the problem says a feed flowing at 100 kmol per hour containing 0.6 mole fraction of toluene and the rest benzene at one atmosphere and bubble point is fed to a distillation column where 99% of the benzene and 1% of toluene is recovered as the distillate. Uh, we can estimate the num minimum number of stages, the number of stages for required reflux ratio, which is uh, 1.5 times the minimum. And uh, given the above information, we can estimate uh, the feed location and the condenser and reboiler duty using the DSTWU block. The key information here is that the feed is uh, 0.6 mole, mole fraction of toluene uh, at one atmosphere pressure and bubble point. So in the um, simulation we need to enter this in, in correct order so that we get um, the feed at its bubble point. So we'll have a, look, a quick look at how it can be done. To start off we open a new file in Aspen Plus and we are going to use metric units. We enter the components required, benzene and toluene. And I'm going to use uh, Peng Robinson method for uh, property uh, because it's a hydrocarbon system. So Peng Robinson equation of state should be sufficient for us to estimate. Then we can uh, choose uh, the DSTWU block from the columns palette in um, Spin Plus and then connect the minimum number of uh, streams required, one feed stream and two product streams. And then for the feed stream, we are going to specify so by default temperature and pressure comes up, but because it's a bubble point feed, we choose vapor fraction and pressure. The pressure was given as one atmosphere, which is 1.01325 bar, and the vapor fraction is zero because it's a bubble point feed, which means it's at its boiling point and should be completely liquid state. And we enter the fractions and this stream is then completely specified. As you can see, all the streams are now completely specified. All we need to do is specify the block so we end, double click on the block. Um, we can choose the reflux ratio. I don't know, we, we don't know at the moment what the reflux ratio should be. So I'm just going to choose a number uh, and enter the recovery, 99% uh, recovery. So 0.99 fraction of benzene and toluene will be 0 0.01 fraction. Uh, because the feed was at one atmosphere, I'm going to choose a slightly lower pressure for the condenser and a slightly higher pressure for the reboiler. That's a design requirement, we can uh, adjust that as required. So when we run this, we get an error, as you can see, 
So let's find out what this error is. So if you can see the run status, it says uh, the stream uh, component mole fractions uh, are not completely um, calculated. We go to the control panel and try and find out what that reason is. Uh, you can see that uh, it gives a few warning and then the error here is uh, that the specified reflux ratio is 1.2 and the minimum reflux ratio calculated is 1.6558. So therefore this cannot solve the problem because the minimum reflux ratio is bigger than the specified reflux ratio. So we go back to our reflux ratio and now I'm calculating uh, the required reflux ratio which is 1.5 times the minimum. So it's 1.5 times 1.6558 which should give us uh, 2.4837. So I reset the simulation and then we can rerun it. This time the run goes fine and we can check the results of uh, the block in the block results. And as you can see, we can uh, see the minimum reflux ratio, the actual reflux ratio that we entered. Uh, the minimum number of stages is 10.3 and the actual number of stages calculated is nearly 18. The feed stage is 9.6 which means it's the 10th feed stage and um, the reboiler and the distillate temperature is given there. And here we can see the information for uh, the benzene flows. However, we need more information so we can add a custom stream table and add um, the mole fraction for each component. Once we do that, we can uh, scroll down and have a look. We can see the composition of the benzene and toluene uh, streams or the distillate and the uh, bottoms product stream. It also gives you the mass and mole flow rate of uh, each stream, their temperatures and pressures and vapor fractions. And um, you can check the enthalpy of uh, each stream as well. To check the duty for reboiler and condenser, we can go back to the block results and you can have a look here. The reboiler heating duty required is 1.05 gigacalorie per hour and the condenser cooling duty required is 1.027 gigacalorie per hour. So that completes our simulation and all the answers required for the question. Uh, we are going to practice more problems on mass transfer in uh, the tutorial coming up. This is uh, it for now and uh, I hope you practice the problem that I have just solved in S1 Plus and come prepared for the tutorial. Have a good day. Bye-bye.